Hi, this is Starkey Sowers, Director of Education for Clark's Nutrition and Natural Foods Market. Welcome again to another PLUS program training series. Today's topic is superfoods or functional foods. So with that in mind, it's probably good to understand what a superfood is. A superfood is something that provides a large amount of nutrients and possibly also has some prevention and protection against certain types of diseases. So with that thought, we definitely want to look at the Hippocrates quote, which is, let thy medicine be thy food. All right, so we're going to move through this series a little bit, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at some history, so to speak, of superfoods. First on the list would be cod liver oil, made famous by Dale Alexander. Second on the list would be desiccated liver, made famous by Jack Lane and Dr. Urshoff at USC. Next on the list is brewer's yeast. And then we also have spirulina, Dr. Christopher Hills, as well as chlorella by Dr. Jensen. And finally, the cereal grasses, such as wheat grass and rye grass and things of that nature. So what we're going to do is look a little bit at each one of these. But these definitely are the superfoods that I consider to be the most popular superfoods today. And that kind of laid the history, so to speak, of superfood foundation in health food stores across America. All right, so looking at cod liver oil, one thing that's unique about cod liver oil, there's a lot of stories behind cod liver oil. And so you think of cod liver oil, when I was a kid growing up, it was grandmother's remedy, so to speak, for anything that ailed you, whether it was flu or cold or anything like that, cod liver oil was definitely the substance to be used. So what we're going to do with cod liver oil is we're going to look at some of the health attributes, and we'll talk a little bit about the history, but we're also going to show you how a superfood becomes a superfood, so to speak. All right. So looking at that, Dr. Dale Alexander wrote many of books about arthritis as well as wellness, as well as dry skin and anti-aging. And his cornerstone and 90% of what he talked about was cod liver oil. So cod liver oil being the first superfood that we're going to look at is going to be kind of our foundational thought on superfoods. So we're going to look at this a little bit in detail. So one of the thoughts was that this, this particular cod liver oil would heal all these diseases, so to speak. So how in the world could it do that? So looking back a little bit, about 1920, we actually isolated vitamin A from cod liver oil. So vitamin A, of course, was known for eyesight as well as immune function and cell growth and all these different things. So the thought was, well, it's got to be vitamin A. That's the cure factor that is in cod liver oil. Well, lo and behold, about another 20 years later, we actually discovered vitamin D. And so when we look at vitamin D, well, wow, that's needed for the immune system and calcium function and prevents rickets. And well, it's got to be vitamin D as well as a vitamin A, right? And so then 50 years after the original discovery in the 1920s and the 1970s, we see omega-3 fatty acids being discovered in cod liver oil. So that kind of gives you an idea of what a superfood is. It's rich in nutrients, probably discovered and probably undiscovered at the same time. All right. So moving on to the next superfood, since cod liver oil has occupied so much of our thoughts, let's look at another superfood and maybe some of its attributes. So next on the list is going to be desiccated liver. So when we look at desiccated liver, a lot of you guys are going, oh, gross. That's really gross. That's an organ meat. So one of the things that uh, made desiccated liver so famous was Jack Lane. A lot of the guys at Muscle Beach at the time were using desiccated liver because it helped with endurance and stamina and um, helping build up muscle tissue at the same time. By the way, still a popular supplement amongst bodybuilders for helping to increase muscular size. And so what happened is this gentleman, Dr. Urshoff at USC, which is the University of Southern California, uh, here in Southern California, where I'm at, actually started looking at desiccated liver. And what he did is he took three groups of rats. He took group A, kind of a, gave them a well-fed diet, so to speak. And group B was the well-fed diet, added a few vitamins and minerals to it. And then group C, same thing, well-fed diet, vitamins and minerals, and 10% of the calories came from desiccated liver. He took these three groups, he put them in water and let them swim until they were fatigued. So group one went, went about 13 minutes and group two went about 13.4 and group three went 87 minutes. And this was the birth of the popularity, so to speak, when it came to desiccated liver. So what happened was they started looking at desiccated liver once again, going, okay, well, what's in this that makes it so effective? Well, then the original thought was, well, it's the B vitamins and the, and the iron and the copper and all the trace minerals that's in it. So later on in the uh, 1920s, we actually started isolating other compounds out of liver which actually was known as carnitine, not even believed to be anything but a vitamin at the time. We now know that it's an intermediate amino acid. But then they also later on, like in the 1970s and 1980s, found creatine, coenzyme Q10, and all sorts of different types of substances. Once again, showing you how a superfood has a whole mirage, so to speak, of different types of nutrients in it. All right, so next on the list after that is brewer's yeast. What's nice about brewer's yeast, been on the shelf for so many years, 
Uh, Beruji is very rich in protein, also has the two uh, popular trace minerals such as selenium and chromium, which have been linked uh, to help with reduction of certain types of cancer, being selenium, and then chromium, of course, uh, for blood sugar stability and what we call GTF or glucose tolerance factor. So a new thought on uh, Bruges yeast uh, just recently in the last 10 or 15 years is beta-glucons, which is a particular type of starch, so to speak, and it's actually good for the immune system. So once again, we see some new attributes for uh, an old substance. All right, so next on the list after, after this, we see spirulina and we also see chlorella. And which I uh, like to call the cereal grasses, so to speak. And so when we look at uh, spirulina and chlorella, what we do is identify with them as being the energy compound, so to speak. And so spirulina, of course, has a large amount of free phenylalanine, which is great for endurance and stamina. Chlorella, made popular by Dr. Jensen for helping rejuvenate the body. Um, so popular now is to take all the different types of substances like this, the cereal grasses, the greens and everything, put it together into one particular product, which we now call today the current greens products. So it kind of gives you a little bit of uh, a foundation on that. At the last, what we'll do is we'll talk about Patricia Bragg and apple cider vinegar. So apple cider vinegar, of course, uh, being very popular to this day, being popularized by Paul Bragg, and then later on by Patricia Bragg continued to this day. Uh, we see some neat things with it, obviously for digestion. We also see some um, particular attributes with it when it comes to like helping to detoxify the system. But one of the neat things recently is some discovery with uh, apple cider vinegar and helping to lower uh, blood sugar. So we're seeing, once again, a superfood of yesterday becoming very popular again today. And so that kind of rounds out our series of some of the history, so to speak, on superfoods and how maybe something that was old once again becomes new. At the same time, we unpile more and more uh, discovery, so to speak, about a superfood, making it once again a superfood. This is Starkey Sowers for Clark's Nutrition and Natural Foods Market. Thanks again for watching a Plus program series.